Hi everyone, my name is Molly McEntee and I'm going to be talking today about female mate choice despite allied sexual coercion in Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins. Sexual coercion occurs in a taxonomically diverse set of animal species and it's a critical component of sexual selection, but a lot of research in sexually coercive mating systems has tended to focus on male mating strategies and male-male competition, and that's left a gap in our understanding of how female mate choice interacts with and mitigates the costs of sexual coercion in these systems. We know that coercive mating systems have direct costs to females, like the costs of injury from male aggression, and that's where the bulk of research has really focused. But there could also be indirect inclusive fitness costs of sexual coercion, essentially the cost to females of not being able to control the paternity of their offspring. So particularly in systems where females invest a lot of energy and time in each offspring, we expect there to be selection pressure on the female to maximize the genetic quality of those offspring, and the best way to do that is via female mate choice. Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins are a great system to look at this question because they have both an extreme coercive mating system and very high costs of reproduction for females. Males form stable long-term alliances with each other. And within these alliances of two to three males, they cooperate to aggress on and mate guard females and also to compete with other alliances of males over access to females. Females have to deal with the direct costs of this coercion, but also large costs of investment in gestation and lactation. Pregnancy in this system lasts a full year and each calf nurses for anywhere between three to nine years. So females are making an enormous energetic investment in each offspring. And there could be strong selection pressure on females to control the paternity of their offspring, therefore controlling the genetic quality of their offspring. So for this talk, I'm gonna focus on female mate choice within alliances. We don't know very much about how paternity is determined between alliance partners. There are no obvious dominance hierarchies in these alliances and male alliance partners are not more related to each other than expected by chance. So dominance and relatedness uh, don't seem to be factors. Female mate choice could play a role in determining which member of a consorting alliance gets paternity. Essentially, if a certain alliance of males has control over the consortship, when the female conceives, there could be copulatory or post-copulatory mechanisms that allow the female to bias paternity in favor of certain males. So our research question is, given the high indirect costs of sexual coercion in this system, do females exercise female mate choice within the alliance? We work in Shark Bay, Australia, and this is a long-term project. So we have well over 35 years of detailed demographic, ecological, and behavioral data. We have really good sighting records of well over a thousand dolphins, and we also collect biopsy samples to do genetic work and to determine paternities. And that's the data that I'm mostly gonna be talking about today. So to approach this question of female mate choice within an alliance of males, what we can do is use biopsy samples to assign paternity for a given calf, so we know the father, and then we can use our observational records to determine who that male's alliance partners were at the time that the calf was conceived. And then we can use that to look at a male trait that we're interested in. In this example, it's male age and compare the trait for the male that got a paternity compared to his alliance partners that didn't get a paternity. We now have a set of 70 paternities in our data sample. So we know all of the dads of these calves. Dads are indicated in black here. And we know their alliance partners. We also know all of the male's ages at the time of calf conception, so we can calculate the mean age of the males that got paternities at the time that their calf was conceived. So we can calculate a population mean for the trait. But we need to be able to compare that population mean to something meaningful, so we're doing that using permutations. Within each alliance, we can randomly assign the paternity and then calculate a population mean based on that random assignment of paternity within each alliance and plot that. Then we just randomly assign paternity again within each alliance, calculate a new population mean based on that random assignment, and then we repeat that a thousand times and plot all of those numbers until we have generated a distribution of the trait that we are interested in if paternity were random within each alliance. And then we can compare the actual population mean of the trait for fathers to the distribution that we calculated under random assignment. So these are the figures that I'll show you in the results, a distribution calculated with permutations compared to the actual value of the population. We're gonna start with male age. 
And we looked at male age because in a number of species, including in spotted hyenas, females prefer older males, potentially because old age is a signal of good genes. We also know that in our population, males are fertile starting around the age of 10, but they don't hit their peak likelihood of paternity until much later between the ages of 25 and 35. So here's the distribution that we generated based on that permutation process. And here is our actual mean value around 26 years old. So as you can see, our true population mean does not differ significantly from the distribution that we generated. And paternity is not biased toward older males within an alliance. And that actually isn't that surprising because typically male alliances are formed between juvenile associates. So males are probably pretty similar in age to their alliance partners. The next thing we looked at was home range overlap between the male and female. In this case, we used male-female pairwise centroid distance. In a lot of species, mating outside of your group or outside of your home range could be a good way to avoid inbreeding. These dolphins are bisexually philopatric, which means neither sex disperses, and both sexes remain in their natal territory throughout their life. So mating with males from outside of their home range could reduce the likelihood of inbreeding. So here's the distribution that we generated using that same permutation process for mean pairwise centroid difference between the male and female. And this is our actual population mean. Again, you can see that the actual population mean does not differ significantly from the distribution under random paternity within an alliance. And paternity is not biased with regard to home range overlap within an alliance. And as with age, this is not a super surprising result because males spend a lot of their time with their alliance partners. And so they likely have very similar home ranges to their alliance partners. The next thing we looked at was pairwise male-female relatedness coefficient. So this is calculated from our genetic data and it's just a measure of genetic relatedness between the male and the female. As I mentioned, inbreeding avoidance is a really important factor in mate choice in a lot of species. And we know that there is inbreeding in our population and it has negative fitness consequences. So we thought that maybe females would be less likely than you would expect by chance to mate with a relative within an alliance. Again, this is the distribution that we generated with the permutation and our actual value. So you can see that pairwise relatedness does not differ from what we would expect assuming random mating within an alliance. And this is kind of interesting. We thought females would be avoiding mating with relatives, but that does not come out in this data. The last thing we looked at was a pairwise male-female social association, which we measured using a simple ratio index. So this is essentially a measure of how often the male and the female were cited together in the years before calf conception. Male-female association and male-female friendships are a really important factor in determining paternity in a lot of primates, including in baboons, which you're seeing here. And mating with males with whom you have a strong social relationship could help provide protection from infanticide. This is, again, the distribution generated under the assumption of random paternity within alliances. And this is our actual mean value of male-female association. And as you can see, the males that get paternities are significantly more likely to have a strong social relationship with that female. We still have a lot of work to do on this project, but this evidence suggests that even in this allied sexually coercive mating system, we are detecting individually specific male-female relationships that are influencing the likelihood of paternity, potentially via female mate choice. So I wanna say thank you to everybody who contributed to this project, and I'm happy to take any questions.